had a premonition. I, I thought something bad was going to happen. And it was just this, it was a chilling moment, really it took my breath away and I did not want to believe it. She came to me just before she died and it was the most amazing experience. And to be able to stand there and hold her hand and to tell my brother and my father that she was okay and that she was so happy that we could be there with her as she passed. And, um, you know, it just, its it was so amazing. I feel like I would love to share this gift with anyone who's lost a loved one and really wants to, to connect with them and be able to move forward in your life because I know how grief can can just shut down your life if you don't if you don't move with it and allow you know the gifts of grief to be able to lift you up rather than to pull you down I know so many people that have gotten caught in the grief cycle and just cannot move forward I lost my husband when I was 37 and he was 44 he actually passed away after a seven-year battle with cancer and it was a really difficult uh, time that we had. I was actually 30 when he was diagnosed and he was 37 and then um, you know seven years of really torture and trauma and uh, you know even to the point of our insurance company not being or willing to pay for our coverage unless we went from our house in Connecticut and lived in Seattle for nine months which we lived in a hotel with our two children and um, so, you know, it was a really, really difficult time. And so many people always ask me, you know, well, how did you get through that? And then especially when he died, you know, what, what did you do? And, um, you know, I just, I feel really blessed that I had an experience where, um, I mean, there's, it's kind of a long story. There is, a, my book is Art of Living Happy After the Loss of Loved One, which explains everything. And that's, that's on Amazon. But to give you kind of a short story about it is that I, the night that he died, I actually had a shared death experience, which means that once, um, I didn't know he was going to die that night. He, his brother was sitting with him and I had gone to the other room to sleep. And before he fell asleep, I, um, you know, prayed to the angels and God and just asked for, for, you know, to let this be a, uh, just an, an ending that we could both deal with because I was just so so scared for him and I, I was raised very religiously and thought he was going to go to hell because he hadn't been baptized and I was just frantic over that. So um, so I prayed and then the next thing I know, I was in heaven and um, this experience absolutely changed my life. It was basically a gathering of all of the people, the souls that Ian knew and it was just the most loving, beautiful, experience that I've ever had in my whole life and um, you know I, I truly believe that God and the universe and the angels everybody said that you know I needed to see that he was going to be okay because I just don't know if I could have carried on um, if I thought that he had gone to hell I mean again it seems so ridiculous that I that I truly thought that but those are my beliefs and so um, when I was in heaven, I mean, again, it was the most beautiful place I've ever seen. The colors were totally different. They were just so vibrant and beautiful and gold paved roads and, you know, platinum buildings and just love all around. And everybody was gathering. It was almost like a potluck dinner is what I kind of, you know, said it was like. And everybody just couldn't wait. And there were huge trumpets blaring and, and the grand mystery and sharp is about to arrive. And um, there's a giant door that just started to open and, and everybody just was oh, cheering and clapping. And right at that moment, my brother-in-law knocked on the door where I was sleeping and said, oh my God, Lisa, wake up, wake up. Ian just took his last breath. And, um, you know, first of all, I was, I, I literally was happy. I, I knew, I saw where he was going and I didn't know what I would do when he died. I, I thought I would just throw myself to the ground and scream and cry and, and I, I feel like I was given this this moment of of divine, truly divine wisdom and guidance to show me that everything would be okay. And then um, the the hardest thing was my children were spending the night at their their grandmother's, and so I had to go tell them in the morning. And so um, this was the second thing that helped get me through is that I was blow drying my hair, and I remember like putting my head upside down and just kind of letting the blow dryer blow on my on my head and. And I was just thinking about that heaven experience and all of a sudden I heard Ian's voice in my ear 
and he said, oh my God, Lisa, I love you so much, but it's so awesome here. And um, it still just takes me back because knowing that I could hear his voice, it just, again, it confirmed to me that what I saw in heaven and that he loved it and it was so beautiful. And, um, you know, it just, it really, it just changed my life forever. I mean, I, it shattered all my beliefs that I was grown up with and, and really has helped me then to develop this, this skill of being able to communicate with others that have passed away and, and angels and guides and all sorts of other wonderful beings of love and light. So I'm just sharing this with you because people ask me all the time how I survived and thrived after losing my husband when I was only 37 and my children were 8 and 10 and how I moved forward. And I truly um, attribute it to this experience of connecting and being in heaven. And, and what I wanted to share that if you've lost a loved one, I would love to help you if you feel ready to move forward and wanting to connect with the person that you've lost because I know that meant so much to me and it's meant so much to so many of the people that I've worked with that it's really, it changes their life when they can actually talk and communicate with their loved one on the other side. This can absolutely change your life and, and make, it, um, make it worth living again and make it, you know, make your dreams come true about being here on earth. Let me pull a card. All right, so this is for you. It's fulfillment. I just want to zoom in on the picture there. And do you see how she's holding her heart there with her arms and she's sitting in a flower? And the fulfillment, what the guides are telling me is it's about you finding the passion in your life, holding your heart like that, and really just going out and doing that. You know, you're only here for a short time. I mean, people say, you know, life is so short and it truly is so if you haven't made a plan today to do something I want you to I'm gonna challenge you everyone listening right now do something this week that you've always wanted to do that you've been putting off okay because there is no time like the present you never know what's gonna happen and again you know my my mom was on that vacation in Hawaii she had the time of her life and then boom she just suddenly dropped dead basically and um, so I challenge you go out have some fulfillment if you're not happy doing what you're doing change it up and find some happiness because life is too short to be miserable